All right, this is John Cole with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode. And if you notice today, like, John, where are you at in the world, man? Well, I'm actually currently traveling. And when I travel, I travel with a juicer so I can keep up my healthy diet, especially maintaining my morning celery juice that I've now been doing for over 90 days, you know, um, that basically the medical medium uh, recommended. And so normally I would juice like celery and cucumber for breakfast um, or as my first like meal or drink of the day. But I'm like, hey, let's just cut out the cucumber because this celery juice, it's supposed to be all the rage. And I know it's helped many of you guys out there watching this and many of you guys may be looking into that and I definitely would recommend it, you know, any way you guys can get more vegetables in you, especially the green vegetables, I think can be definitely beneficial. You know, to me, what I've seen after doing the celery for 90 days is that my skin, I mean, my skin's already fairly nice, but it actually even, you know, even got nicer and I seem to be a little more resilient. My digestion has also seemed to improve. And sometimes when I drink the straight celery juice, I get a head rush. Like I'm like, whoa, I'm kind of high or drunk, but, but, I'm, but I'm not. It's like an alkalizing high because it's really alkalinizing your body and really, in my opinion, negating the effects of all the junk food, the processed foods, and all the excess animal foods you guys are eating. That being said, don't just still eat all that junk stuff, right? You want to just get on a healthy diet of eating more fruits and vegetables. And that's why the appliance I'll be sharing with you guys today can help solve your problem especially if you're traveling, right? If you're traveling or, you know, you, frankly, you just don't have a lot of money to invest in a good solid juicer. Maybe you're using a blender currently to make your celery juice. I recommend against, highly against using a blender for making the celery juice. It oxidizes the celery so much, it'll make the celery juice taste even worse. <laughs> so today what I want to show you guys is actually my carry-on luggage. It's right here, it's sitting here, man. I do a carry-on, it's kind of puffy in your life. If you're a flight attendant, you're saying, John, I'm not going to let you on with that, man. It's like too big. Well, luckily it compresses down and it will fit in the overhead. So anyways, let me show you guys what's inside. Aside from all my clothes, I travel with a juicer. And this juicer actually is a TSA compliant, which means that they haven't approved it or anything like that. But what it means is that you can't take it through the carry-on or through the x-ray machine, um, you know, as you walk on. So like this is my carry-on bag. Very important. It's not my check-in bag. Um, so, like, if you travel light and you want to avoid all those excess luggage fees, just carry on. Plus, when you're carrying on your bags and not checking stuff in, it's not going to get lost. And trust me, I've had situations where I needed my luggage and it got lost. That's not fun to deal with. Anyways, this is my bag. You guys can see it's fully packed up with all my different clothes. But I also have a juicer in here. So the amazing thing about the juicer that I'll be sharing with you guys today is that it's under $150. It's the best low-cost, inexpensive juicer that I've found that's actually durable, that I've actually tried to like really work hard and tried to break, but I haven't been able to yet. So packed here amongst my clothes, this juicer weighs about five and a half pounds. So really it's not that much extra weight to your luggage. That's one of the reasons why I like the machine so much because it is so light. Some of the more expensive heavy duty juicers that you know are probably better for your home, frankly, you know, those could weigh you know 15, 10, 15 pounds. So anyways, let me show you guys. So we got my uh, clothes here. <laughs> and actually, this is a cool shirt. It says, every day I'm killing it. If you guys want to get your own shirt like this, like I wear, you can check out compassion-tees.com. I definitely recommend them. But aside from that, I actually have a juicer packed in here. So, you know, here's my jeans. <laughs> my jeans are just not my jeans, but look inside, right? If we unfurl the jeans, we got my juicer. So I basically use my clothes as padding and to protect my nice uh, stainless steel body uh, juicer here. This is actually known as the shine juicer. This is the main uh, body of the juicer. Uh, this is the motor body. And what I like about this is this is nice and compact. Literally, it's about um, five and a half inches, five, five and a half inches in diameter. So this is actually quite small. It's, I mean, it's like maybe like an oversized beer mug. <laughs> when, I drank, when I drank beer in college, I don't drink anymore. But that's like the size of this, super small along with my clothes. Now, also in here we have just the, uh, the juicer top. So this is the juicer top, it's about just as big. This, this um, is one complete unit, so I basically just have this fully assembled, so it takes the most space. Sometimes I'll shove socks and down in there or whatever, you know, if I need extra space. But this is basically a slow juicer, you know, so the reason why you can take this through the TSA is because there are no blades, no sharp objects on this, right? Um, if you take a high-speed centrifugal ejection machine, they may not let you take that depending on how the TSA is feeling that day. And I don't like playing with the 
TSA or gambling on how they feel that day because sometimes they're going to take away a butter knife from you and sometimes they're not. That's based on my experience. I don't know the exact rules on that. Um, and the other thing that I have had taken away from me is when I've tried to travel with a blender. Oh my God, I've had blenders taken away or at least the blade assemblies on the blenders so many times. Sometimes I would get through and sometimes the guy, the TSA guy's like, oh, you can't have that. It's blade. It's just sharp. You could take it out and you could cut somebody. I'm like, come on, man. I'm not going to take it. Out. Anyways, they took it. Don't argue with the TSA. Just let them do their job. I appreciate them for what they're doing. And they're just basically following the rules. So, but this, you can take this through because, I mean, this is how this machine works, literally. Um, there's this auger in here, which is, there's no blades on this auger. It's 100% plastic. I'm going to rush it against my face. I'm not cutting myself. <laughs> and this runs at a low and slow speed. So literally, you put the produce in there. It comes around at like uh, 40 revolutions per minute, which is really slow. And it slowly crushes and squeezes out the juice into the collection cup or, you know, a cup that the hotel provided uh, for you guys. And so... Uh, it, it's going to maximize the nutrition in the juice because it's not a high-speed, fast-running blade like a blender or a high-speed juicer. And also, more importantly, if you are got to get up like I did today at like 6, 7 a.m. to make juice before the event that I'm attending, um, you're not going to wake up the next hotel room. I know there's been hotel rooms. I've had it. You've had it. That you've stayed in where you literally hear the TV from next door, right? You don't want somebody like banging on the wall of a freaking hotel room at 6 a.m. because they're like hearing your high-speed juicer, right? They're not going to be able to hear this. They'll hear your TV before they hear this slow juicer, so you're not going to disturb anybody. Plus, know that you're going to get the highest quality uh, nutrition with this machine. And it's super simple, super easy to assemble. You're just going to take it on here. Um, there's a little dot here. You're going to line up the dot with the top here. There's an unlock symbol. You're going to put just uh, slide that down uh, right on the top there and slide it into place, it's going to lock into place, and then you can go ahead and put the top on. Now you could travel with this fully assembled, I do like that there's a handle on this, and look at this man. I mean I'm so strong that I could li literally lift this up with one finger, I could probably do it with my pinky finger too. <laughs> but this is super light, so this is not going to add a lot of extra um, you know, weight to your luggage, right? Now this is pretty much all you need to bring, like I've done it where I've actually had like a plastic bag, you know, I'll take a plastic bag if I don't want to like use other space in my luggage and I'll take a plastic bag and then I'll basically like kind of like line it up like right over here to catch all the pulp coming out and then you know I've taken cups from like the hotel and just catch my juice in the cup. This has a nice uh, spout cap so you could push that down to stop the flow of juice when you're done, drink your juice and then you know make another one. I've also used like reused bottles of like water to fill up and then take with me during my day. Um, yeah, but nonetheless, I would recommend you guys bring some collection cups. I did bring some collection cups off a different juicer today because they are larger than the ones that come with the shine machine. That being said, the ones that come with the shine machine are totally uh, perfect and will work great. Um, but anyways, uh, these collection cups basically just go underneath to catch the uh, pulp and catch the juice. I also have brought a strainer. So this is one actually I purchased and I brought and I'm using it today on the celery juice to show you guys actually that this machine barely puts any pulp in uh, the celery juice. So really you shouldn't need a strainer if you're only making celery juice. Now if you're making something like carrot juice, this machine makes a fairly pulpy carrot juice. So then you will want to have a strainer. Um, and then other than that, this is like, oh, and then you got the pusher. Let's see. Yeah, the pusher. Um, if you want to save space, I don't recommend bringing the pusher because actually I do not recommend you guys use the pusher when using the Shine Vertical Slow Juicer or any slow juicer for that matter. Um, if you are basically putting produce in and then pushing it in to like get it to go in there, right? In my opinion, you know, uh, you're doing it wrong. If you use the pusher, that's going to compound the problems that you may have with the juicer. It may cause parts to break because you're stressing out the machine too much. So I do not actually recommend using the pusher. <laughs> that's going to go back in my bag. Um, but make sure if you guys get the shine or are using any other vertical slow juicer, check the link down below. Um, Juice Like a Pro in Any Vertical Slow Juicer is the title of the video I made on YouTube where I go over my top 10 tips so you guys get uh, and have the best experience with your vertical slow juicer and get the most yield and actually uh, score the least pulp in the juice. Uh, so that's, that's basically all you really need to bring. These extra things are kind of some things I like to bring in addition. I like to bring a cleaning brush. So this cleaning brush literally cost me 49 cents at Ikea. It's the best cleaning brush I ever found. It has a lot of surface area. It has nice stiff bristles. You could use one from, you know, the dollar store or whatever. But I really like this, the shape and everything. So you will want to also bring a cleaning brush to scrub down the juicer. It's going to save you time over the little small, 
you know, toothbrush, oversized toothbrush brush they give you to clean the juicer normally. So you definitely will want to bring one of those. Now the other thing that's extra credit, right, that I, I bring because I'm really into this is I bring a mason jar. So the cool thing about the shine juicer is that you can literally take this mason jar and maybe actually we'll do that today. You can just put it right under the juicer. So if you bring a few or at least one extra mason jar with you, the juice can go right into the mason jar. So you have to get up early, 5 a.m. to do your juicing so that you can get to your event on time or whatever you're doing when you're traveling, whether you're going to Disney World or whatever. You could have your juice in here, then you're going to take uh, your lid and then you're going to take uh, this guy, which is a vacuum sealer. This thing is like 10 bucks. It's made for a food saver. You put it on the top and then you get a pump. And I'll demonstrate this later, but basically you're going to pump out the excess oxygen out of the container um, that, of the juice you just made. So that now this juice, you know, once you put the lid on it here, you store it in your fridge, keep it super cold. It'll not oxidize as quickly retaining more nutrients for you. So for example, if you had to like juice early, you drink a juice and then you can make another juice, put it in here, store it in the fridge, keep it cold, grab it right before you leave, and then you could drink it later in the day. It's gonna have more nutrition than if you didn't do this. So I will explain how I'm doing that in a little bit. But yeah, I'm, I generally don't leave without my <laughs> pump and a mason jar so I can pull a vacuum on it. And I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, I got the juicer, I got a bunch of other clothes and stuff in here, you guys don't need to see that. So uh, anyways, what I wanna do next is actually show you guys actually how I juice in a hotel room. All right, so now I wanna show you guys actually what you need to juice in a hotel room. It's not too much. I have my work surface here, but you know what? I'm like, I'm a germaphobe, honestly. <laughs> and like, I'm not gonna just sit here and juice on this table that they probably didn't wipe down or travelers from all over the world have been here doing who knows what on the table, you know. So what I got is, I got what I, in my opinion, the cleanest thing in, in, in the room. <laughs> Maybe for some of you guys, you might got, why guys want to bring a tablecloth or some other stuff I don't like to extra, travel with extra stuff. But I got a towel, you know, usually they run these towels through like a washing cycle at high heat and dry them, and I think they're at least cleaner than the table. <laughs> but that's a whole nother topic. So what I'm gonna do first, actually, we're gonna go ahead and lay out uh, basically this large bath towel over the table Number one, to protect the, the, my, the table so I don't like totally get it all dirty. And then the, you know, the housekeepers could just grab this and just throw it in the wash machine. And at number two, so that I don't get my produce dirty that I'm juicing. Now sometimes I'll bring like a really inexpensive like a cutting board from the dollar store, literally. The Dollar Tree sell these cutting boards, 99 cents for these thin plastic things. You guys have seen them before. Sometimes I'll bring those. Um, that usually I leave them in my carry-on bag for some reason this time they were missing and then the other thing actually I did check bags this trip so actually I brought a knife I like to use a ceramic knife you guys don't need to bring a knife when you guys travel just ask your hotel to borrow a knife from their kitchen I've never been refused when I ask for a knife sometimes I'll give you a plastic knife and then say hey you know I'm really I really need a sharper knife can I can I get something else and I'll, I'll be sure to bring it back and generally they're gonna do that for you because I mean you are the customer all right so yeah I got a knife and then so once we have this nice work surface here then we're going to go ahead and set up our juicer. So we're going to set up our juicer here, and we just got our uh, collection cup right here with our sieve, and then we got our pulp collection right there. You're like, all right, John, so you're all set up, but you're missing something, man. You're missing the produce. Well, that's because the produce has been sitting in the fridge inside the hotel room. So the next tips I want to give you guys, if you guys are traveling, always get a room with a fridge. That's so important if you guys want to be juicing. Otherwise, you got to buy the produce and then come back to your hotel juice it and then drink it immediately. The fridge allows you to keep the produce cold so it's not going to go bad. Plus it allows you to keep your juice cold if you can't drink it until later. Otherwise you're kind of screwed. So some hotels you can actually request a fridge if they're a nicer caliber. That being said, I, I would encourage you guys actually if you guys are going to be living on a juicing lifestyle and want to eat healthier when you're traveling, get an appropriate hotel room. What is an appropriate hotel room? An appropriate hotel room is like uh, one of those, it's called a residence inn or um, or uh, let's see, Extended Stay America, Candlewood Suites. It's these hotels that actually are like literally a miniature apartment, right? They have a full-size kitchen or at least a smaller size condensed kitchen. Homewood Suites is another one actually I like to stay with. Um, you know, they basically have a full oh, house to suites, the, Hilt, the new Hilton chain. Actually, that's kind of nicer, although the fridge is a little smaller than a full-size fridge, but it's plenty big. Um, yeah, but they have a nice kitchen with like a nice, nice you know, kitchen sink so you can actually easily wash your produce. You know, today I'm not in one of those kind of places, so I'm actually just washing my produce <laughs> in the regular sink. Sometimes I use the shower to wash my produce as well. 
But yeah, if you get, just get one of those, it makes things significantly easier because they'll provide you like all the sharp knives, cutting boards, all that stuff you guys will need, as well as a fridge. And then basically all you need to bring is a juicer. Anyways, what I'm going to do next for you guys, actually, I'm going to go ahead and wash up my celery. We're going to come back and then we're going to get it juiced for you out in the shine juicer to show you guys how easy it is. So as you guys can see, now we've got three heads of celery to juice, which will be my first meal of the day. And I'm actually quite thirsty, so I need to prep this celery. I just washed it in the sink. And I want to show you guys my technique. This doesn't mean you guys got to use this technique, but this is the way I do it. Um, I have moved the garbage can actually right below me. You guys can't see because it's right at the foot of the table. Um, so I can basically uh, take my knife and cut off the top part that has been all exposed. I want to get rid of all this part. It, I think it's kind of nasty. And if you juice this, you know, because it's been oxidized, it's going to make your juice taste really bad. Plus, there may be additional bacteria in there. So I cut off the top, and I'll basically cut off the bottom. Where also there's a lot of dirt and whatnot, and so that basically will free the celery. So now they can just totally come apart, right? Once it comes apart, then what I do is I take like a paper towel or like a tissue paper. But I didn't bring a paper towel with me, and I basically just wipe down the celery, you know, right in the little um, U curve. That's where kind of like some dirt and whatnot collects. So you can kind of see that um, on my paper towel a little bit. Some days I'll do this more, some days I'll do it less. Luckily, when I usually when I try to buy celery, I try to like look to make sure there's not a lot of dirt on the celery, so I don't have to do this extra cleaning step. Um, you know, I like to try to save time, and if you, I could save time by just buying a different head of celery, hey, that's even better. So uh, once I do that, uh, then uh, what I do is I cut it up. So what I want to do for you guys though, first is actually tell you about selecting celery at the store to juice, right? The best celery is the one that's heavy, heaviest for its size. That's the number one tip I want to give you guys, right? If you pick up celery and you have two heads, they're the same exact size, One's really light, one's really heavy. What is that telling you? That means one is dried out. That means that you will not get enough as much juice out of that one that's lighter than the one that's heavier. The other thing that means is that as the produce starts to dry out and get older, more importantly, it starts to oxidize, if I could put that in any kind of word, right? And basically what that means is that the celery juice you're going to make from that older celery is going to taste nasty. It's not going to taste as sweet. Not that celery juice necessarily tastes as sweet. It can taste neutral to quite bad some of the celery I've juiced over the last... 90 days I've been doing this program. Um, yeah, so so pick ones heavy for size. Also, I encourage you guys to get ones that are as green as possible. The greener ones means that they have more chlorophyll, and in my opinion, that's to be more health beneficial. I encourage you guys to get full size heads instead of buying the celery hearts if you guys are able. Generally, the heads are usually a better deal, not always. Um, and also, of course, I recommend getting the organic celery that's not going to be sprayed with a you know toxic pesticide residues that may not just wash off when you're washing the produce off. Anyway, that's my celery picking tips real quick for you. Now we're just going to go ahead and uh, cut this celery up. So I basically like to line all these guys up, take my knife, and this step is, is um, you know, it's not optional. You need to do this if you're using the shine juicer or any other vertical slow juicer. You see the strings in the celery that I can like, let's see if I could pull one off here. Look at that. <laughs> like the string of the celery, these strings right here, that gets stuck in your teeth when you're eating the celery will jam up and clog up the juicer. So if you do, if you omit this step, right, and you're gonna then you're gonna email me, John, my juicer clogged up. What happened? Well, you didn't cut the celery. So basically, I take a knife. This step takes me seconds, literally. I cut the celery, just go down the line, boom, 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 until like I try to do like quarter inch or better yet eighth inch pieces. Sometimes I'm not super accurate, but you know, as long as you got like a nice quarter inch piece. It's going to work great, and you're going to not have an issue. Even if it's a little bit bigger, not that much uh, of a problem, but try to go with eighth inch or quarter inch, and if you cut them bigger, that's what it is. So, yeah, anyways, that's about the size that I cut them. I don't, you know, know the measurement on that. But, yeah, we got uh, one head of celery cut up. And before we start even juicing that one, right, I encourage you not to juice this. Prep all your food so you have just one big pile of uh, cut up celery that then you will turn on the juicer and juice in one fall swoop. It means you're going to maximize the nutrition in the juice because... Uh, and, and you're running the juice for the least amount of time as possible. So uh, I'm gonna just going to go ahead and uh, cut up these last two celeries for you and add them to the pile. So well, maybe we'll do this in <clears throat> fast forward mode for you guys. So you guys can just see me move super quick. <laughs> All right, so as you guys can see, I had a full <laughs> big pile, three heads of celery right there. <laughs> It's a nice big pile. So now we want to go ahead and turn the juicer on. You know, and besides preparing the celery to make it easier to juice, the other thing about the Shine, because it is a you know more inexpensive model, under $150, which is amazing. It's not like a $400 juicer that I normally would recommend. 
you know, it has a limited duty cycle. You know, the, the more expensive machines could run 30 minutes at one fall swoop without any issues, without overheating, and actually I've used some of them for up to an hour without problem if you get a good quality machine. That being said, the lower quality machines um, generally have a shorter duty cycle. Some juices I've seen from China have like a five minute duty cycle, which is ridiculous. You could barely juice anything in five minutes, and most people don't read the instruction manual, so they exceed that amount, which means they could be, you know, um, uh, uh, harming the motor, which is going to cause it to decrease its life cycle, which means it's not going to work as long, which means you guys are buying a disposable juicer. I don't want you guys to just buy a disposable juicer because juicing is not something that is disposable out of your life. Once you start doing it, once you start feeling the benefits, feeling results, you start losing weight, your skin complexion starts to get healthier, you look more attractive, you know, you turn your health around, you lose some of the challenges or some of the pains or aches that you may have had previously because of getting on eating more fruits and vegetables. So that's like non-negotiable. So I only sell you guys the best juicers that are gonna be you know, uh, working for you guys. So the Shari juice, although it is inexpensive, it still has a long three-year warranty, which is at least three times longer or even longer than some of the other inexpensive juicers out there. So I really want you guys to buy quality, and this is a lower price quality machine. This is made by Tribest, who's been making juicers now for geez, since like the 1990s, <laughs> so do the math, over 25 years or something like that. So it's a solid machine, and basically they went in and like fine-tuned and beefed up this machine to basically make it, you know, probably the best low-cost juicer literally money can buy that I've found so far. Anyway, but that being said, this only has a 10-minute duty cycle, which means you should only run it for 10 minutes straight. If you guys want to get out your iPhone and your stopwatch app and run it for 10 minutes and turn it right off after that, you guys can do that. You guys probably don't have to be that, you know, um, retentive about doing that. Um, but basically, um, what I found is if you juice up, to, you could juice up to about 48 ounces in one fall shrew before you should probably turn this machine off, clean it out, let it rest, let it cool down before you actually make any more, right? And that's just one of the downsides of this machine. The upside, is, of course, is that it's inexpensive and it's light. And if you guys want to, I use this machine for traveling. I got better machines at home. <laughs> and if you want to learn about a good machine for celery at home for medical medium, check the link down below. I made a whole comparison of my juice, all the major, I juice celery and all the major brand juicers, so you can find out which the pros and cons of each and find out which one may be the best for you. But for travel, this is totally the best, hands down. All right. So yeah, let's go ahead and turn this guy on. And all we gotta do now is just simply take the celery and take handfuls, literally the celery, and dump it in. No pusher required. You know, I really like that this machine is auto feeding and I don't really have to do any work at this point. I've done all the hard work. I've washed the celery, cut it up. Oops, and we're gonna put this spout cap up. And as you guys can see, literally it's crushing and squeezing out all the juice of the celery. And the other thing that's impressive about this inexpensive machine is that although I've, you know, I've cranked in celery as much as I can, I've put in like carrots, <clears throat> I've juiced, you know, arugula in here, I've juiced apples in here, I've juiced beets in here, like even some of the more expensive machines that I, I've used myself in my home, like will stop when I put some hard items in because the machine just does not have the torque, the sheer torque to power through, like I haven't been able yet to get the shine juicer to stop on me. So that is impressive. <laughs> so yeah, as you guys can see, the pulp is coming out. And actually, you know what I gotta tell you guys, honestly, like I've used a lot of juices in my day. This pulp on the shine is like drier than some other juices that cost more money. <laughs> I'm quite impressed on how well this inexpensive juicer does. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Like, what I'm going to do for you guys now is to save you guys some time is we're just going to go ahead and put this on the fast forward mode and you're going to see me, like, in an instant <laughs> with some music, um, juice up this celery. You'll see this rise up. You'll see that fill up. And we're going to come back at you when I'm done to see how much juice we've created with the shine juicer with three heads of the celery. And then I'm actually going to more importantly show you guys how to uh, preserve your juice if you need to drink it later in the day and not immediately. Alright, so I'm just about done juicing in the shine juicer, collected all the, the celery bits and the leaves um, off the, off the um, table here, running that feed machine, and it looks like it's done an amazing job. I mean, this definitely took well under 10 minutes to basically, literally, I think I've made probably around a quart of juice 
Um, that being said, once you put the last few items into a vertical soap juicer, you want to let the machine run maybe for another 30 seconds to 60 seconds to kind of let it extract all the juice out, right? Just because you put the last thing in, don't just turn it off immediately because you guys can see uh, juice is still dripping out of the machine. Uh, the other thing I will say is that, you know, um, I try to pull off a lot of the celery leaves, although I do leave some, especially if they're kind of looking kind of funky, right? Uh, the leaves of the celery, um, when you're juicing them, can make the juice more bitter. I don't personally mind that, and actually there's more nutrition if you juice the leaves, but for those of you guys that like don't like bitter things, it's best to cut off more of the leaves, all right? So it looks like this shine juicer is done. We're going to go ahead and turn that off. All right, now we're going to go ahead and turn off the shine juicer, close this valve cap so we don't get any drips on the table here. And I'll show you guys actually how much juice um, this created, but also more importantly, how much pulp is in the juice. Look at that. I, the, all the juice that came out of the machine ran through this sieve here, and there's very little uh, fiber that was caught in this sieve. So for juicing celery, literally you don't really need to use a sieve. If you are juicing something like um, carrots, it does make a pulpier juice for sure, in which case you will want to use a sieve if you do not want to drink any of the... Um, insoluble fiber, right? All the soluble fiber from the produce that you're juicing, uh, for the most part, ends up in the juice because soluble means it dissolves in water. You know, so for example, in carrots, even though you think you're removing the fiber that's over here, you're just removing the insoluble fiber. All the soluble fiber is soluble, stays in the liquid, stays in the water, so carrots are about 50% fiber, um, soluble versus insoluble, so still getting some of the fiber in there. Now I want to show you guys my special technique for storing this juice, since actually this juice I probably won't get to juice again until maybe late tomorrow, so this is maybe my tomorrow's uh, breakfast. We're going to go ahead and take the juice, pour it in this mason jar. And this mason jar is 32 ounces, so it looks like we made, well, we made just about 32 ounces, but very important if you're doing this technique, don't fill the mason jar to the top. Leave at least, I'd like to say, leave at least like minimum, I'd like to say half inch, three quarters of an inch would be better. I might have filled this a little bit too much, but this will definitely work. We're going to go ahead and put the mason jar top on. Then we're going to use this food saver um, jar sealer, put that on the top there. And then we're just going to go ahead and take this pump. If you guys want a specific video on this, where to get the pump, where to get this, check the link down below, how to store juices for up to a week. That being said, I don't necessarily recommend you store juices up to a week. <laughs> you know, you want to you drink the juice always right after you make it as soon as possible for the highest health benefits. You want to definitely keep it cold, as cold as possible, right around 34 degrees right above freezing so that this stuff doesn't freeze but keep it super cold keep it under vacuum that's the best way to store juices if you cannot drink it until later so then we're just going to go ahead and put the pump on here and we're going to pump the pump up you're going to feel some resistance and what hap what's happening now is this this uh this food saver lid basically sucks the air out of the container forces that lid down while you're sucking out all the excess oxygen and if you listen carefully you can kind of hear the lid flexing up and down as i'm doing this and you can pump a bunch, I'm pumping usually about 10 times, at some point there's a point of no returns where really pumping additionally is not going to get any additional vacuum on there, right? I think we're probably pretty good there. And now what you guys can see is that this top is literally sealed down. We can put this upside down and it's not going to fall over because this is under vacuum. To make sure that we don't lose the vacuum, I am going to put a screw top on there, right? So now literally we have a 30, approximately 30, 31 ounces of the celery juice made in my hotel room. This is going to go in the fridge to keep it uber cold, and then I'll drink it later in the day. And I think, and actually I have more celery than I got to juice right now for the meal that I'm, this is what I'm supposed to drink, but I want to demonstrate this for you guys, right? So there, you know, I've showed you guys how to solve your problem of maintaining the medical medium celery juice while you're traveling. Of course, you could go to Whole Foods and spend, you know, $10 for a straight celery juice. I would say don't waste your money. That's quite expensive. They use a high speed machine that lowers the nutrition in the celery juice. It's a lot more convenient to not have to go to Whole Foods, not have to go to the juice bar, go out of your way, then argue with the guys working there so they can make you a straight celery juice because it's probably not on their menu. It's easier just to buy a $150 juicer, pack your juicer with you, pick up some celery at the local health food store, even just the grocery store, so you guys could stay on the celery and get those amazing health benefits that the medical medium talks about. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, enjoy me showing you guys actually how I travel, right? I would encourage you guys to support me in my work. That's how I'm able to make these videos. So I appreciate you guys so much that support me, that end up buying your juicer from me. Um, we will match any other authorized competitors' delivered price 
on any of the juicers we sell, including the Shine juicer. So if you do see a lower price, let me know. I'm glad to match that so you guys could support me so I can continue to travel <laughs> by my salary and juice it and more importantly make videos for you guys to hopefully inspire you and change your life and also ensure that you don't make the, an incorrect purchase decision. It, it, it makes me so sad when I see somebody buy like an inexpensive machine from a big box store or some other online website and then it fails or it doesn't work well. You know, And, and before I sell any machine, I, I put it through the ringer, right? I test it vigorously to make sure it's not gonna break. I try to break these things. Um, you know, and then and only then will I start to offer them to you guys. You know, there's many machines I sell that I, that I that I that I try out that I never sell because I don't feel they're of the quality. They have some problems. They put too much pulp in the juice. They're they're just cheap and they're overpriced. More importantly, this is probably the best affordably priced, best low cost juicer that I've found in all my years selling juicers. So if you guys are looking for a good travel juicer, even a light duty home juicer, right, for making celery, 16 ounces of celery juice every day, I could definitely say the Shine Juicer is it. If you guys wanna buy the Shine Juicer, check the links in the description or in the comments below. Um, it will be so to, to the product page of this. I also will put links in the description below to other videos I made with the Shine Juicer, you know, um, how I'm able to juice different items in it, um, how I uh, use it in other ways and, and whatnot. So uh, yeah, so uh, I guess the other thing I would say is if you guys enjoyed this video, <clears throat> me in my hotel room, hopefully not looking at my neighbors, not with the loud juicer, but with my loud voice, <laughs> please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also be sure to leave your questions and comments down below. Um, generally I check questions and comments usually the first uh, week after the video is published and then there, I have over 500 videos on this channel so I can't possibly answer each and every question. So if you do want to contact me, once again, check the link in the description below. Uh, to go to the website to fill out a contact form. Let me know the challenges you're having, some of the things you want to juice, the percentages of each, and some of the features in the juicer. And I'll be happy to more than more than happy to help you select the right juicer for you because I want you guys to get the right machine the first time so you guys can live on this juicing lifestyle and get the benefits because I truly know those benefits could help you amazingly. And you know, it's given me more energy, my health has turned around, I rarely ever get sick anymore. I mean, juicing is one of the best things I've ever done in my life aside from eating copious amounts of fruits and vegetables, which the juicer uh, sincerely allows you guys to do. Um, also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below and make sure you hit the little bell um, notification so you get notified when my new and upcoming episodes coming out come out every five to seven days approximately. You never know what new appliance you'll be learning about, what new juicer I'll be comparing so that you guys can get the right appliance for you to increase the amount of fruits and vegetables that you guys consume in your life so you guys can get healthy. And uh, finally, um, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge over 500 episodes on this channel at this time comparing all the different juicers um, and now vacuum blenders, um, uh, comparing dehydrators, and soon I'll start to offer the freeze dryers, let you guys know what that technology is about and how valuable it can be to you. Also, be sure to share this video with somebody else that travels like you that is on the Medical Medium Diet. Share this to your Medical Medium Facebook groups, to the different online groups, to your email lists, if I've helped you at all, so you guys could, we could spread the knowledge of, of eating healthier so that we could change the planet one person at a time. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicer.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicer.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors.